Hey there, Jason Freed back again with another video. Today I'm gonna to walk through some of the new stuff in Basecamp 4. So we just shipped Basecamp 4 sort of officially yesterday. We've been rolling it out over the past year, but now it's available to everybody. And it's a continuation of Basecamp 3, so all the great stuff that was in Basecamp 3 is also in 4, plus all this new stuff that I'm about to show you. And there's other things that are in it that I'm not gonna show you. These are kind of the highlights, but there's a, quite a bit more as well. So if you go to basecamp.com new, you can kind of check this out yourself, but I'm gonna sort of walk through this page and then flip over to the app and actually show you the new things live in our own account. So the first thing is we've completely redesigned the home screen, which is the screen that you see when you log into Basecamp. So let me just take you through ours. So this is our account here. And at the top you have your logo. This happens to be the 37 Signals logo, so it's our logo. You'd put yours there. Um, make a new project. We used to have an option to make a project or a team. Now it's just a single thing called make a project. It's a lot simpler and clearer. We also have now moved the invite uh, flow right to the home page. So before you'd invite people from within projects, which was actually quite a bit complicated depending on if they were in the account yet or not, we've elevated this. So now you just click invite people. We ask you what kind of person they are, someone who works at your company, an outside collaborator, partner, contractor, or guest, or a client and you go through that flow. Um, and so those two things now are, are, are much tidier. Um, below that, we have a new section here at the top for pinned projects, and you can pin anything you want, and you can also reorder these pinned items. Pinned projects, of course, stay at the top, and they're kind of things that you're really sort of, you want to be on top of, so those just stick there at the top. And then down below, it's going to show you up to um, 16 additional recently visited projects. Now, if you have a smaller account with fewer than 16 or so projects, you're going to see everything there. But if you're not, you're just going to see um, some of these things. And then down below that, this is brand new. You have your schedule on the left. This is stuff that, these are events that you're part of, you're assigned to, or you're, uh, you know, scheduled for. And on the right, you have your assignments. This could be to-do items or other things that are assigned to you. So your homepage is now your pin stuff, a place to invite new people, make a new project, get to stuff that you've been bouncing in and out of recently, and then finally down below, your things that you really kind of want to be on top of. So it's it's much more of like a, a dashboard bouncing off place than it was before. We also have a really wonderful list view where you can zoom through all these things in different ways, uh, just in list view if you prefer to do that. Um, but the default view is this graphical view. And also if you have fewer than a, just a few projects, the cards are bigger. So everything looks nicer for new accounts as well. Everything's sort of proportionally sized for the size of your account. All right, so that's the new home screen. Let's scroll down to the next thing. Now I'm not actually gonna show you this because it's not officially launched yet. Although, um, actually, you know what? I will show you this because by the time you watch this video, let's say you're watching it in a month or something, you'll probably have this. So um, I will take you through this briefly. I'm also gonna do an entirely separate video on this too. We have a brand new feature called Card Table which has been a long time coming, one of our top requests. It basically brings Kanban to Basecamp, but with our own unique spin, with a number of sort of practical twists to it. So let me walk you through what that looks like. I'm going to jump into uh, Product Strategy, which is a project that has um, card tables in it. Again, just for those who are uninitiated with Basecamp, these are projects. You click on one to go into it. And of course, by the way, the people who are pictured here are the ones who are on it that sort of thing. So I'm gonna go into project strategy and you'll see here there's two card tables. Maybe a little bit of background actually would be useful here too. In Basecamp, you have a series of tools that you can add to any project. A project lives on a single page. You've got these tools at the top and then down below you have a full history of everything that happened in the project in real time, minute by minute. So it's a wonderful way just to dive into something. You can dive directly in or you can scroll down and get up to speed all on one page without having to go anywhere else. In this case, we have um, a chat, we've got a place to store docs and files, a message board for sort of announcements that we're sending out, some to-do lists, and then these card tables. This is what I wanna show you. A card table is essentially like a Kanban thing, except it's a little bit different, in that there's sort of this, this what we call a triage space at the top where you can sort of dump things in without having to think about where they go yet, just dump them in. Um, and then down below, you can drag them into these columns if you're ready to bring them into the workflow. You can create as many columns as you want, color them, move things through, et cetera. There's a lot more to this um, as well, but um, that's essentially what the card table is. I'll talk more about this in a dedicated video separately, but that's in Basecamp 4. 
All right, let's go down to the lineup. Brand new feature in Basecamp 4. So Basecamp historically hasn't really had a great bird's eye view of all the stuff that has a start date and an end date sort of laid out on a single timeline. Uh, and now it does. So it's called the lineup. And if you click on the lineup up here, you'll see it. This is what the lineup essentially looks like. Of course, it's going to look different depending on what you have going on. Um, but some fundamentals. Down the middle is a line. This stands for today. So I'm recording this video on Wednesday, 28th of September, 2022. This is today. And then what you do is you map these projects that have start and end dates, and I'll show you how to add those onto this. So any project that has a start and end date will show up here on the timeline, or I'm sorry, on the lineup. So you can sort of see where things are. You can see we're like, you know, less than a quarter of the way through because these things move across the timeline as time goes on. So you can kind of see how much time you have left and what's going on. Current projects that overlap with today. Um, so the start and end date is between today. Uh, shows up as, as a big, uh, you know, big row here, essentially. Previous things that were completed that are still visible on the timeline, uh, on the lineup timeline, are smaller here. And if you had stuff planned in the future, you'd see those as well plotted out here. And again, as many as you have, you'd see them all. Um, it shows you the name of the project, the description of the project, who's working on it, and the start and end date. And what's really nice about this view, too, is that let's say you need to push three projects forward by a week just because like you're running out of time and something isn't done. You can just click the date, assign a new date. I'm not going to do this because this is actually live real information. Assign a new date, and you can just quickly reschedule things really, really fast if you need to. So that's what's really nice about the timeline, but it's a wonderful way to get a picture of like what's actually in play right now, when things started and when things have ended, or are gonna end, I should say. To add a date to a project, you simply go to a project and um, you go up here and you say edit project details and you can pick a start date and an end date. And if you have a start date or an end date, you're gonna see this little pill at the top of the project above the name that has a start date and the end date and again, a vertical line denoting today. So you can kind of see where you are when you're on a project and you can go to the lineup and see sort of the meta view across a variety of different projects. So that is brand new in Basecamp 4 and it's a wonderful view for managers, for anyone who just has to get a sense of where things are, you know? Um, it's just right here and really wonderfully done and just happens automatically. Okay, let's move down to, ah, this is a new feature called participation types. And this is a, a wonderful little subtle thing, but makes a big difference. So um, with Basecamp, historically, people were either on a project or not on the project. So they either could access it or not. And we've sort of added another option here for people um, called, called uh, either on the project or just following. Let me show you how that works. So I'm going to go back home here. I'm going to jump into, I don't know, um, mobile. You'll see the mobile, this particular project has these seven people that are on it. So if you're on the project, it's going to have um, your avatar. And then it says plus 71 just following, okay? So there's 71 additional people following this project that aren't actually working on it, but they can see it. And uh, you'll see if you go to the setup people screen, um, people who are on it have this orange pill and everyone else has just following. And you can very quickly just change uh, someone's status instantly and it makes a quick change. We picked orange so there's a lot of contrast. So as you scroll through, you spot it. If these were just words, like just following or on, you wouldn't be able to spot things quickly as you're scrolling down. So um, we're very careful about making sure the interface is very useful for people, even without having to read. You just kind of look and you see. So that's what that is. What's the difference? Um, if you're, It says it all at the top. If you're on the project, your avatar is going to show up at the top of the project. It'll also show up on the home page and in the lineup. Um, and you'll be notified when someone chats in one of the campfires. Um, you're also in a default notification group when new things are posted. People who are just following won't hear from the project at all unless someone specifically app mentions them, assigns them to something, or loops them into a thread. So it's a really wonderful way to follow a project quietly without having to... Um, get all these notifications that you don't want because you're not really involved, but you still want to follow along. So that's what uh, participation types lets you do. Doors. Uh, doors is a really cool feature. Um, let me show you Doors. So Doors is a, uh, a way um, to bring the outside world into Basecamp. Historically, 
Again, Basecamp had a series of tools or has a series of tools. This happens to be a to-do list tool with a hill chart at the top, a quite <laughs> involved one. Uh, to, more to-do lists, message board, docs and files, campfire, schedule. These were all built-in Basecamp tools, but you might be using another product, uh, some third-party product or one or two or three with your project. And it's nice that because Basecamp is the all-in-one, one place to go, the definitive resource for a project, it's nice to be able to link off to the other things you might use right from Basecamp as well. So let me show you what that looks like. Um, I'm gonna jump into, actually let me jump into uh, to Mobile Basecamp here. Um, so I'm in Mobile Basecamp, which is another project. We've got a message board, campfire. You'll see we also of course have integrations. You can pipe in external data into your campfire. This is a campfire chat, right? So people can chat and you can quote chats and all that stuff as you'd expect. And you can also pipe in um, data from GitHub or anywhere else you want. Um, we've got to-do lists. We've got another to-do list. This is the Android uh, release to-do list, and this is the iOS release to-do list. Um, got a schedule, docs and files. We've got a card table in this one. But you'll see here, we've got two GitHub repos, one for the BC4 Android uh, repo and one for BC3's iOS repo. So to add an external tool to your Basecamp account or to a Basecamp project, because each project has its own set of tools, you can go up here, say change tools and this says open a door and here's the menu of external services including internal services so if you want to link to another Basecamp project from within a Basecamp project there's a really nice easy way to do that Figma, Dropbox, GitHub, Help Scout, you know Google stuff, Airtable, Adobe, you name it it's all here Teams, and Vision, Notion, the whole thing um, and of course if there's something that's not here you can ask us and we'll probably add it um, or you can um, add an, a, a separate one. And to add one, all you would do is you'd click the door um, and you would add the link um, to the thing you want and that will then add that uh, door to the project. So um, really useful way to bring the outside world into Basecamp. Uh, okay, out of office, uh, you know, kind of a standard feature, but we didn't have it in Basecamp. People were sort of hacking it. So we said, like, let's look at how people are hacking it and build it in. So internally at Basecamp, people would sort of superimpose, they'd, they'd take their avatar and they'd edit it in, you know, in, in, in Photoshop or Figma or whatever and add a little out thing at the bottom. And so we thought that'd be kind of cool. Let's just build that in. So um, let me show you. In fact, you'll see here, J is out. So it says out underneath his avatar. Now, how did he get that? Well, you go up to your avatar in the top right corner and you go to out of office. And here I am and I'm in or I'm out. And if I'm out, out slides up over my avatar. Everywhere in Basecamp, once you save this, that little out thing would show up and you just pick the dates. And between those dates, you get the little out thing. What's also cool is that um, if someone tries to at mention you, um, actually in fact, let me, let, me, let me do that. So I'll just show you how this works. So if someone tries to at mention you, I'm gonna try to at mention J here. So I'm gonna go at J. You'll see J is out until September 30. So you know if you're trying to reach out to Jay that he won't get this for a few more days in this case. So it's a really nice thing to do. It's the same thing is true if you try to assign someone work and they're, and they're out, it tells you how long they're out until, so you don't have to guess. So that's a really handy feature there. Um, let's go down to the next thing, um, don't forget. So um, in Basecamp, we have a single place where all your notifications flow in. It's called the Hey menu. It's right in the middle and it's, it's really nice. All your notifications are here. Um, these are unread notifications. These are previous notifications, um, things that I've read. And then there's this new block called Don't Forget. Sometimes there's a notification that you want to look at, but later you don't want to lose it. You don't want to leave it a new for you because you've already seen it. So on any one of these, you can hit this little Don't Forget icon and it'll just pop it down into the Don't Forget section. So it never goes away. Even if you've looked at it, it doesn't go away until you clear it out yourself. So it's a really handy way to, uh, to, to, to make sure you don't forget something. And you can do that with notifications that are in the Hey menu. You can also do it um, uh, in, in comments. So let's say I'm looking at a, at a comment somewhere, I don't know, something like this. And there's some comment down here and I wanna get back to uh, Fernando about something. I can just go boom and say, don't forget. That'll add it up into my Hey menu. And um, here it is, don't forget. So now I 
Click that, it'll take me right back down to it, and there it is, and I can get back to Fernando later. So that's brand new in Basecamp 4. Repeating to-dos, I'm not gonna actually show you this because it's pretty straightforward, but now to-dos can repeat and recur every week, every day, whatever you wanna set up. Every 30 days, if you have a bill to pay, something like that, you can set them to recur, which is really handy. Also another big request. Um, add multiple instances. By the way, can you tell? There's a lot of stuff in Basecamp 4. I'm talking fast. There's a lot of incredible stuff in the new version of Basecamp, which is available today for everybody, including all of our existing customers get it automatically. Um, so uh, now um, you can add multiple instances of a given tool. So historically, um, let me just jump to a cool example here. So historically, um, Basecamp projects had a single message board, a single campfire chat, a single section for to-dos, a single place for docs and files. And now you can add multiple instances of a specific tool. So you can really customize things, this, these projects and you can call these tools whatever you want. So for example, this here is a message board, which we've renamed Heartbeats and everybody posts their heartbeat, which is something people do, team leads essentially do this every six weeks. They summarize everything their team's been doing. It's all in one place. Everybody in Basecamp can access it. And we can see what's been going on across the company over time. It's really wonderful. So we have one for heartbeats. We have one for kickoffs. Kickoffs are just sort of the opposite. They're not summaries of the past. They're projections of the future. Here's what we're working on over the next six weeks. These, again, get posted centrally. Everybody in the company has access to this. Everyone gets a notification when something is posted. So everybody knows what legal is working on, what product's working on, what customer service is working on, what customer success is working on, what finance is working on, et cetera. Wonderful way for us to keep all of this stuff, by the way, in a single project called What Works. We make a new one every year. Um, and there's some other things. But you'll see this is two message boards, message board one, message board two, and we rename them. I'll show you how that works. Um, so you can add another, if you wanna add another message board, you can hit add another here and, and do that. Um, I'm not gonna do that right now, but you can rename these as well to anything that you want. So uh, it's, it's pretty handy. So that's um, multiple instances of a specific Basecamp tool. And um, this is uh, the, the last thing I think I'm gonna show you. Uh, no, actually two more things. Um, I'm not gonna have, well, I'll walk through it, but it's not a big deal really, it, except if you've used Basecamp, it's a big deal. Um, we've just radically simplified the process to add people to projects. It's now a single field. You just type people's names in um, and you can add them to whatever. I, I don't really have a great example of, of this. Um, I'll just go here. I'll say set up people. I'll add people. Let's say I wanted to add Rosa. Just do that. You know, let's say I wanted to add Jay-Z. Just do that. And, and that's it. Before it was a, a much more involved form and it, this is just much, much faster. And also if you don't wanna type people in, you can click this link here and pull up a company. And from that company, I'll just pick up our, pull up our company. You can just check people off really fast if you just wanna do it that way. Or you can add everybody or nobody or whatever really, really, really quickly. And it's a major improvement. You can add a personal note if you want to. So it's a much, much better way to add people to projects now. And, uh, the last thing I'm gonna show you on this screen is, um, like we added doors to projects, you can also now um, upload, or essentially not really upload because these are cloud files, but link to all sorts of different cloud services from within Basecamp. So for example, um, I'm just gonna go to a project that I know we have set up um, right here. And this is a, a docs and files section within the marketing paid media project. And you'll see here we have a uh, Figma uh, file. It's not really a file. It's on Figma. Um, but what's cool about this is that not only can you post this, this, this external link to this external service and it has the proper icon on the whole thing, but you can discuss it down below. So here's some creative that, that we're looking at. Um, there's some back and forth down below. So we're talking about something that's somewhere else, but we're using Basecamp and all of its fundamental conventions to discuss the thing here in Basecamp. So we're not discussing it on Figma which sounds like, why wouldn't you want to discuss it on Figma? Because the more you just spread your discussions out all over the place, you can't know who said what, where, what's going on, where should I go to talk about these things? So we always talk about these things in Basecamp. Everything gets a dedicated page. And the creative might be in Figma, but the discussion and the notes are here in Basecamp. The last thing I actually do want to show you is something that's not on this list yet, and 
a lot more, um, is something called All Access Projects. So let me jump in, let's see, let me find a, uh, maybe a good example of this. Here we go. Um, so you'll see there's a little tab up here called All Access. Um, it used to be in Basecamp that either you had access to a project or you didn't. And then we added this participation type where you could be working on it or just following. But now there's a new way to get to projects that you just want to mark all access, meaning anyone in the company can join it if they want. They don't need to be invited at all. So you can turn that on inside a project. You go to project details and you can decide this project is invite only. This is the default still invite only, meaning only people who are explicitly invited can see it or you can turn it into an all access project and therefore anyone who has a link to the project, who, who looks at it in the list view on the homepage, anyone can just join the project whenever they want, if they want to. You can also allow just anyone from your company or, or pretty much anyone else in the account contractors, guests, that sort of thing as well. So if it's an all access project, it gets this all access tab. If you hover over it, it explains that. And uh, if it's invite only, it just doesn't get the, the tab at all. So a lot of stuff, I talked quickly, um, you can recap this on your own time if you want by just going to Basecamp.com slash new. And we'd love for you to try Basecamp 4 if you used to use Basecamp in the past. I and mean, we've been around for, Basecamp's been around for 18 years. So a lot of people used previous versions and they haven't looked at it for a while. Some people have been with us the whole time. But if you used this before and you haven't been with us for a while and you want to check us out now, I think you're going to be very pleasantly surprised and impressed. So we'd love to have you uh, check us out. Come to Basecamp.com, sign up and give it a shot. Uh, but if you just want to see a recap of everything that's new, go to basecamp.com slash new. And I hope this was uh, helpful. If you have any questions, post them down in the comments below and looking forward to making another video for you soon. Thanks again for watching.